Hello and welcome to In Stitches. Today on the bench I've got this little Vulcan toy sewing machine. As you can see it's been well used and I was actually given this machine by my mother's friend Maureen. You know Maureen's had this uh, since she was a little girl. Uh, the wooden case here that's not original apparently her father made that for her. It's got a little drawer here for storage at the back and uh, the machine's not working it's uh, in need of quite a bit of TLC uh, but when she came to visit me at a quilt show recently she saw this little uh, Vulcan that I had on display here the Vulcan Senior and you may have seen a video on this one I'll link the video in down below in the description uh, but yeah, she saw this there and um, she was having a wee rummage around at home and came across this little uh, toy from her childhood here, little Vulcan. And uh, she very kindly gave it to me. I tried to um, uh, refuse, uh, <laughs> uh, you know, because, well, the way I look at it, it's almost like a, a family heirloom really, isn't it? But um, anyway, she insisted and I gratefully... Uh, took the machine and uh, so I think the least I can do is try and get the machine up and running again uh, So let's take a wee look at where we're at with the machine Needle bars floating around You know that shouldn't be floating around like that So if we turn the wheel oh, You can see the wheel the hand wheel there is quite buckled. I think actually that's just a bent shaft and it's uh, the little handle here, the back of the handle is sort of scraping on the back of the machine here on the side there. So I need to get that sorted out. But first of all, you know, let's have a look at uh, what's going on with the drive, the needle bar drive mechanism here. So what I might do to start with is we'll get the machine off the base here. Uh, there's only two screws there. There were originally four, but uh, there's a couple of screws missing there. Off the base there. We'll have a wee look underneath. You can see we've got the hook down this end here and feed dog, underside of the feed dog with a little return spring and the drive mechanism here. If we take a look around the back here, you can see we've got a little presser foot lift lever here. That seems to be working. Well, Vulcan label there, made in England. Uh, cast, cast aluminium, I would say. Is that what they call die cast? Die cast aluminium, is it? Yeah. Uh, the paint works, you know, uh, seen better days, but, you know, I don't intend on fully restoring the machine or, you know, as far as aesthetics are concerned, I don't intend in restoring that part of it at all. I'm just going to leave uh, the patinaed look there. But let's try and restore the mechanical situation here, the issue there with the needle bar. So we'll whip out the two screws and get the back off here. Another one down here, see what's going on. And behind here, now that back panel should pull off there. Lift the foot, oh, that might be. There we go. There's the back panel. It's got the foot, foot bar there little spring little foot lift lever pretty neat uh, well yeah can see the problem <laughs> that is not supposed to be floating around like that uh, that well, what's this yeah, that's the little, how does that work? Oh yeah. 
Oh yeah, that's a little drive crank there. So the way this works is you've got your hand wheel driving a shaft here, driving this gear. So you've got the yeah the little idler with the this crank pin here. So that's driving this uh, this uh, crank here like that. Oops. And we'll see that that drives the uh, this rod here. We'll see how that works in a second. Um, but the idler connects down to another gear that's driving the hook and the feeding mechanism down here. You might be able to see the hook uh, turning under there. And the feed appears to be working. That's good. Have a wee look underneath. So this is the little hook here, picks up the loop off the needle and the needle comes back down through the loop and then this goes around again to pick up the loop again. Also on this area here there's a little eccentric there and that drives the feed mechanism, that's the feed mechanism here, this and this plate is connected. So we can see the feed mechanism working there. Ooh, this handle scraping here. So you can see that feed working. So that side of things seems to be working fine. We just need to sort this issue here. I can see a problem here though because this here is supposed to pivot on this like that and from the factory that would be riveted riveted over there to hold this bar here in position so that it can just move up and down like that and that drives the needle bar you see if I actually connect that little pin down this end here, this little pin here, through that hole, like that, we can see that when it's driven at this end by the crank, our needle bar moves up and down like that. Now the problem is, is that there's no material left here and you know like to form another rivet or attach something to that to hold this on. You see it's just going to fall off otherwise. A close look there. Yeah you can see that there's not much left of this little pin here and that's going to be a problem. So yeah not 100% sure if I can repair this. Yeah, let's just have a wee think here, that if I just hook that crank there onto there and then uh, that that hooks that there hooks onto the crank like so, down this end should be able to hook onto that linkage there. See if I can, yep there we go. So now we're hooked up. If I just hold that there you can see how this works here. That's how it should work, um, but I need something to hold this in position. I was just having a wee think about how I could, you know, at least temporarily uh, repair this, at least just to get the machine running so we can test it to see if it actually works. And what I'm thinking about doing is putting a spacer on you know between here between here and here so that 
when I bring the back panel on and screw it in, the spacer holds this in place. Hoping this will work. But I was wondering whether if I could put a nut like that there, because there's a little bit of a stub here, enough to, you know, sort of hold a, a nut there if something was pressing up against it. And I'm wondering if I can put a screw like this here in the back of the nut there, just screw it in a few turns, and then, you know, sort of clamp that with the back of the casing here so that the back of the casing holds the screw a little bit like uh, my finger is doing just there, my thumb. And that way, you know, this might uh, at least hold it there reasonably well. I mean, it's not the best fix in the world, but it's the only way I can think of doing it reasonably easily uh, without getting too carried away. I don't want to drill out this here and, you know, put another uh, a bolt through, you know, I could you could just uh, drill, you get rid of this nub and drill right through. The problem is then is you end up with a, a screw sticking out through the front of the machine. There's, you know, possibly other ways, uh, other materials and whatnot that could be used to build this little nub up uh, back to original. But I think just for a, a quick solution, uh, the nut and the screw might work there. So what I need to do is I need to work out the distance between the threads here, when the screw's screwed in, uh, so the length of the screw I need to work out, so that the the head of the screw you know sits up against the inside here, and this inside surface here pushes the screw into the nut there and holds it there. Um, but I don't want it too long, otherwise uh, this uh, back cover won't go back on fully. And I don't want it too short, otherwise the screw will just, uh, you know, rattle around and you know have the ability to uh, fall and and drop out of position there. So I'll, I'll do a little bit of trial and error with uh, different screws, different screw lengths, things like that, and uh, we'll come back and see how we go. I've got a screw here which I think is the right length. I've done a little bit of uh, trial and error here so that I know that it's working. So I can I can just sit the nut and the screw on there. Just tip the machine over there, just like that. There we're upside down here at the moment, but that's all sitting in position there. And if we put the back on. And just push that back into place there. There we go. And the back is sitting snugly on there. That's nice there. Just like that. And then I can screw these screws back in here. Screw that one in there. And that will clamp the back and the bolt in front of it to the nut there and hopefully it should uh, drive properly and stay in place. Okay, that's working fine there. Well, that's good and you know I can put a little bit of um, resistance on there and it seems to hold together. Doesn't seem to be any problem there. So I think that's quite a good fix there, even semi-permanent, you know, and uh, nice and easy. Uh, so next thing to do is to try and sort out this uh, buckled wheel here. And I think it's just the shaft is bent there, so I'll try and get this wheel off. I'll have to take that back cover off again. Let's do that. Now, I 
think I should be able to just pull uh, that split pin there and this shaft I think should just pop out now I do want to be careful not to upset any timing here in case this gear sort of uh, falls but I don't think it will should be able to just pull that split pin straight out there it's uh, you know the ends of the split pin aren't bent over here they're fairly straight so I should be able to just pull that straight out there we go and hopefully that'll just pop out there there we go yeah and that just need to be careful of this here and hopefully we can get that right out yes okay and there you can see it's um, got a bit of a bend on uh, can you see that yes yeah, see it's off to the sloping off to the right there slightly so I'll go ahead and straighten that out and then reinstall it into the machine here okay I've got it straighter it's not 100% perfect but it's a lot better than what it was so we should be able to just put that back in you can see there that it's still got a little bit of a bend on it actually looks as though that this uh, the spokes you know this wheel here it looks to me like uh, the shaft is fairly straight now there's a slight wobble there uh, but it looks to me as though the whole wheel itself is kind of you know the wheels actually bent slightly uh, so it's got this permanent sort of angle on it but at least the you know the little handles not scraping you can see that handle was scraping down here and now you can see that there's you know a decent amount of clearance there now so you know that's that's pretty good I mean I'm not going to you know fully restore this to perfection just want to see if it'll sew pop that back in there just like that and then I'll just bend that slightly just to stop that sp split pin from coming out there it's looking pretty good there we've just got a, a little issue here just have to reposition this here okay put that back on there so everything seems to be in order there Okay, let's put the machine together and see if it'll actually sew. Oh, you may have noticed this little lever sticking through the front here. Lever, that's your stitch length. So fully down is uh, full stitch length and up for a short stitch length there. You can see there that the uh, needle clamp screw is missing but I've got another one here so I'll just install that I've actually done a little bit of uh, playing around with different needles the standard universal needle you know the uh, 130-705H needle appears to be too long so I've actually gone for a DCX1 it's a industrial overlocking needle it's got a round shank so there's no flat on the shank but um, the key to these ones is to have the scarf which is this little cut out here you might be able to see it just above the eye there there's a little flat surface there that's called the scarf and the scarf there is where the hook comes through and picks up the thread so that uh, the hook is coming through on the right hand side of the needle so the scarf needs to be on the right hand side of the needle you know there's no flat surface to orientate these needles so I'll just install that 
with the scarf to the right there. Yeah, that's good there. Just give that a little tighten up there. I don't want to go too tight. There we go. There we go. And then we want to thread the machine. I've just noticed there's no spool pin here. So I need to work out a, uh, a system for the spool pin. But in the meantime, just to get the test of this machine done, just to see whether it actually sews, I'll use the spool pin from the uh, Vulcan Senior here, this one here. I'll just pop that around the back. I will pop the thread onto the spool pin at the back there. So I'll just come through that eyelet there, down through this guide here, over the tensioner between the discs there and through this eyelet here and then up to the eyelet and the needle bar, the top of the needle bar there. Like that. And then just a matter of threading the needle there. It's actually quite a fine needle, it's a size 70 but not too fine for this. Just pull that through and we're ready for a test to sew here. So Maureen, it's probably been a while since this machine has sewn. Okay, let's uh, do a test run here. See if the machine will actually sew. After all these years, I think it's sewing. It seems to be forming stitches. And it's feeding correctly. Everything seems to be working there. There we go. It appears to be sewing and it is forming a nice little chain stitch there. So there you go Maureen. I'm not sure how long it's been since this machine's been sewing but uh, there it is sewing again all these years later. Oops, I think I jammed it a bit there, did I? Yeah, so I think I'll leave it there at that point. And uh, thank you very much for watching. Thank you as always to my patrons on Patreon. And we'll see you in the next video.